Hey, what's up guys? Tobias Monk from Lit Video Productions. We make epic videos for epic companies and welcome to week two of my vlog. Today I'm going to be talking about my passion of creating videos and what a, why I even got into this. So it goes all the way back to being a kid. I mean, I just loved movies. I loved Jim Henson. I loved the idea of like creature creation and and doing effects and and stuff in camera for some, I've just always been drawn to that and I loved watching behind the scenes uh, of anything growing up from Star Wars to Jedi to there was a series called uh, movie magic I think that's what it was called if you, if you guys remember that show you watch that show leave, leave a comment below but movie magic they did one on like the incredible 50-foot woman and a couple other different ones um, being big on like Ray Harryhausen and his stop motion art and the things that he did and understanding how that worked. And there was actually in my elementary school a couple monster books as well. And in the monster books they would always show behind the scenes photos of like Godzilla productions, King Kong, uh, Dracula, these are the old, uh, a lot of the old MGM stuff, so Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, and it showed um, them putting the makeup on, what the makeup artist had to do, what Bela Lugosi or, um, uh, oh, it's kill me, I can't even think, not Lon Chaney, um, ah, I can't think of his name, it'll come to me later, you guys know who I'm talking about, kill me below, the internet loves to kill below, right, kill below, in the comment section, but, Taking all of that, and then, you know, as you grow up, I got into playing guitar, got into doing this, that, or the other. I've always been somebody who would try different things. Didn't know what I was doing in my 20s. Went to college, studied theater, did lighting and theater, that kind of thing. Knew that there was something I wanted to do that included the technical side of things. Started throwing parties and all this other stuff. And it wasn't until a uh, health condition, I have eczema, and it got really, really bad, and I was working in the bar as a bartender at the time, and in the restaurant industry, and I thought that that's pretty much how I was going to make it, because when sometimes you just don't know what you're doing, and you find an industry that seems to be okay, and you're working in it, and at least you're making some kind of money, but obviously I didn't have a future there, so that's when I went back to school, I did a six-month program, um, Actually, let's go. Let's let's take it back to that. Before, when I went to an open house at this school, I originally went to check out their audio program to do like concerts, um, band recordings, whatever, installations, that kind of thing. But then I saw their video program, and I saw it just something clicked inside of me and was like, you know what? That's that's what I need to do. So I took out a loan. I did the program, it was full time, six months, three months editing, uh, three months production, three months editing. So you learn the two aspects really quick and then it was just kind of smack you on the butt, send you out into the workforce type of deal. And I haven't hit the ground running since. It's just been uh, steady doing work. At first they got me a lot of gigs out of school, I guess school, vocational school, that's what those kind are. So they got me work out the gate, did some Geico commercials, of a local company got to work with a company that was doing like different dance recitals so i went and shot some for them and then also did some editing so i could really work on my chops on that eventually found my way into some part-time on-call positions at different places um and just started connecting and everything and didn't understand really about networking didn't understand about all that it's just kind of how do you how do you get more work how do you I, th there wasn't as much resource as there is now um, back then this is only 10 years ago so anyway we go all the way through that and I've got I got just I just built and built and built I just needed to know I think uh, get back to the cinema style when you're doing video and you're doing broadcast style video you're working with like Hitachi Sony cameras whatever it is you're doing videography uh, with those kind of cameras you start to do different things but you always want that like depth of field you always want that that out of focus shot you want to do everyone wants to do rack focus and we all want to do the pool the, the the dolly zoom everybody wants to do this type of stuff so it wasn't until the dslr revolution kicked in and i didn't get my first dslr to what three years ago so at that point i'd been training on other cameras knew about editing production and my lighting background was really really pushing forward and i was doing sets and that kind of thing and understanding how to, to do that so then i got a dslr and uh, the the learning the the dslr really helped me understand lenses 50 millimeter 24 millimeter all that kind of stuff a little better how depth of field 
Now, when you're on a really shallow depth of field, trying to keep the subject in focus as they're moving around can be a gamble or, or a little harder. And I had a T, I have a T6i, but at the time I was using a T6i with a stock lens, the 28, uh, was it 1855, 1855, 3.5 to 5.5, I think, is that what it is, um, lens. So, I mean, which who doesn't start with a stock? So, I, I honestly, I only stopped using that a year ago, guys. And I still use it on the DSLR, but as far as transferring to my other cameras. Because then after the T6i, I decided to invest and get the C100, which I'm shooting with right now. And that was, I mean, it was the frustration of going from DSLR with no audio inputs. I had a separate, I still have my Zoom recorder. I use it all the time. It's a great piece of equipment to have um, when you need audio feeds and you don't want to run a million foot of XLR back to your main. But, um... I was getting sick of having everything separate and I wanted it back to being a video camera, but I still wanted to do cinema style. So at that point, the, the C100 Mark I, the first version, excuse me, you can only get, you can get used versions of it. And I have one that doesn't have dual pixel autofocus because I didn't want to spend the extra $500, which they were still priced at a certain point if they had that. Last year, it pretty much went that they all were kind of the same price whether they had it or not. But a couple years before that or a year before that, that was the case. I'm just going down my gearing equipment that I've been like moving. But I think it's, I don't know, I guess it's, it is important because this is part of my journey. Yeah, I guess it would be. <laughs> I don't know. What else am I going to talk about? Um, oh, and then we led to our XC10, and the whole point of the XC10 is I needed something better than the T6i to shoot video on for a B camera, and um, I wanted something small that could still fit on gimbals that we already had for DSLRs. The C100, pretty beefy, was a little too much for a lot of our smaller gimbals that uh, friends of mine that I work with have and own, so the XC10 was looking better and better. Now, I know it has a lot of downside, but at the same time, it does a lot of great things, and for how we wanted to use it, and we're discovering more and more ways to use it, it's been a great tool. And it's also our step between HD and 4K. So when I do decide to go to either the C200, C300 Mark II, probably by the end of this year, and we go 4K, I'll have a second camera that can match it. It's gonna kill me on CFast 2.0 cards, but <laughs> I'm just gonna have to budget it out. You know future cast and budget everything so but i don't know maybe if i just talked about that progression about working all the way from being a kid to like almost where i am right now and the gear that i use um just lights cameras it just doesn't stop can uh, mics um you just keep getting more and more and more stuff and in fact i gotta get some new batteries because the gig last week uh i dropped this one so I mean, I could probably gaff it back together, but I mean, I would honestly, I'd prefer to just uh, buy a couple more take, and take that and get it recycled, you know, no harm, no foul, whatever. I also lost the lens cap, an XLR cable, a lot of stuff the other night. When you're in a dark club and you're trying to pack out fast, um, sometimes you can forget some gear. But look, I talked to the DJ that has my XLR. We're going to meet up. We're going to have a copy, a one-on-one -on -one to bonus, you know? Let's take that negative into a positive right away. So, guys, um, let me... I want to hear... I don't know. Is my... Just my story about my journey kind of like... You, maybe you can understand why I do what I do a little more. And just... This has been a long time coming. This has been since I was a kid. And then finally realizing it and getting to a point where it's, it's coming together. It's working. Um, why? Because I haven't stopped. And that's the biggest thing. Don't stop. You just, every day, you know, if you're going to move that mountain, you move that one pebble at a time. This is where we play the Zen music. You know what I'm saying? You just got to move it one, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. So I always remind yourself that as you're going through anything, even as I was going through up to now in my career, that first couple years in, you're looking at stuff and you're like, how do I get it to look this way? How do I get to do this? Oh, this looked really good. How can I recreate this again? And you'll start getting some standardizations and stuff. And, and it's like people say, you're only as good as your last gig, guys. So um, I don't know. I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. If you have any, you want to tell me about your journey or if there's any part of your journey that sounds very similar to mine. Um, if you remember Sam Goody, which is where I got 
um, from Star Wars to Jedi on VHS tape back in the day. It had to be the 80s. It might have been the early 90s, but it was probably like 88, 89, something like that. At any rate, um, leave it in the comment below. If you want to hear more of my story as we start getting into more of this process, as I just start talking about different aspects of video making, give us a subscribe. Give us a subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. So, guys, until next week, everybody have a fantastic day and may your week be epic. My name is Tobias Mug. I'm with Lip Video Productions. Cheers. Thank you.